a shorter step. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Does anybody have any questions for me? OK. So what kind of tap actually worked? Because I heard, like, what not to use? Is there what like kind a brand of... or style or something? When you tapped into it? Oh, for the drilled tank? Yeah. I have no idea. I've never done a drilled tank. I don't know what ports are available or bulkheads. Uh, you just need to make sure that it's not going to get packed in with sand and totally defeat the purpose of the drainage port. I see two. No hard questions, please. <laughs> <laughs> How did all of the dry sand that you put in in the beginning with you know, whatever little um, coconut that you mixed in with it, how does it become so moist that you can do a poke test to it without adding water? Um, the humidity from your pools, like once you seal the tank, and a lot of times the sand has more water in it than you realize it does. And once you add the heat and start creating the humidity, um, it kind of builds its own. And a lot of people never have to add water at all. Like it's once they seal it up and get their water pools going, in a couple days they're able to do a successful poke test. But it all depends on how you start out with the sand. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Jeff. Question. <laughs> Those of us with much larger builds with a lot of crabs, if there's a situation where we are moving our crab habitat from one place to another significantly enough that we not, may not be able to bring the substrate that we currently have, is this a method that you would recommend us to follow? And if so, is there any benefit to bringing some of the substrate from the existing tank to your new location? I think if you have a good bioactive setup already going, like you want to kind of hang on to that good bacteria and bring it over with you. Yeah, so even if maybe, even if you can only bring a bucket full and kind of get it started, it would have that beneficial bacteria in it. Um, so I had really good solid four sand and um, then it got hot and the air conditioning came on and I have a lot of condensation. Um, I have a big tank. Um, I try and wipe it down every single day, but uh, it's always present. Is there anything that you can suggest? Like I've heard people here suggest covering the tank at night, um, things like that. Do you have any like solid suggestions for combating condensation this time of year when all of us are trying to stay cool while keeping our Hermes nice and warm? Covering the tank when you're not observing your crabs is a good way to help. Even if you just like take bubble wrap or something and go along the front wall so that there's a little bit of insulation between the air conditioning air and the hot glass like that can help but like you don't want to do that all the time because you want to see your crabs but like if you're at work go ahead and cover them up um, a lot of people will put dry moss along where the condensation is happening um, <laughs> there's some other interesting products that you can use in a pinch <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, that are absorbent and will work in the tank also and can be put down into the sand and will absorb a lot of water. So um, that's an emergency <laughs> option. <laughs> yeah, let her bring the microphone up to you so everybody can hear you. Um, hi, so I was just wondering, I know um, mold can be an issue, but have you ever had an, any issues with algae? So I... On one of my tanks, I do actually have algae on the glass. And I, it took me a long time to figure out like how, because that's not facing a window, but it's facing another tank, and it's bouncing off the one tank onto the other one. Um, I've spot checked it several times, and it's only right on the glass, and it's not in my substrate. So I just leave it there. I monitor it. The crabs dig through that spot all the time and are constantly churning it. I just make sure that it doesn't smell bad, or I don't smell anything from that corner, and it's not turning black. But as long as it's just green algae, it's, it's OK. I second that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like in my substrate, there are like damp spots, like mm -hmm. kind of like deeper down. And I'm kind of scared because I have like molting crabs and I don't want to like turn it up. So like, what do I do? You just have to wait. Okay. <laughs> you have to wait for them to come up and then churn it and kind of get it redistributed. It, I know that's the hardest part is just sometimes we can't do anything except wait for the crabs to come up. <laughs> 
you think sometimes the crabs going down with water in their shells when they molt and then yeah. like can make damper areas too? Yeah, like, so maybe that's just what's happening. Yeah, I, I think they definitely use some of that water if they get down there and find out that it's not damp enough, they use the shell water to get it you know, where they need it to be too. So um, some, plate, some pet stores sell like this stuff that you can mist on your substrate to create like good bacteria. Do you recommend doing that? Um, I, I've never used that. If you set your tank up right, the good bacteria should start on its own. Um, I don't know anyone who uses that spray. I've seen another one that's like a probiotic air freshener <laughs> for your hermit crabs. I'm like... <laughs> Your crabs shouldn't need air freshener. If your tank smells, there's something wrong in the tank, so. Um, I just have an observation. When I had algae, I thought it was far enough from the window, but I made sure it was algae, not mold, and then I cut a covering that covered that part of the sand, mm -hmm. and then I would periodically check it, and once it was covered and didn't receive the sunlight, it caused the algae to go away, not come back. Yeah, yeah, you can cover it and remove the light source and it should go away, but it doesn't bother the crabs and it doesn't bother me, so I just, I grow algae. <laughs> it's a plant that I can't kill. <laughs> I was just wondering, how bad is only having coconut fiber? Um, it's, it's pretty bad. It's hard for the crabs to molt correctly. There's no protection. You know, the other crabs can smell them. They can easily tunnel to them. It can collapse. I tried all cocoa fiber when I first started out. When I got my giant tank, I'm like, this. I'm not hauling 600 pounds of sand into my basement. So I did uh, cocoa fiber only, and my crabs started dying. And when I dug it out, the whole bottom of my tank had this white muck underneath it. The cocoa fiber, when you, it's wet and hot, it starts to... Uh, compost and break down, and you don't want your crabs molting in something that's like composting around their body. Did we ever do an acid test on it too? I know I no, like I, I spent a lot of time like researching, trying to just find actual data, and I couldn't find it. And I don't know how to go about conducting that yeah. test. So if so. anyone wants to take that on, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did see one online, uh, Maribel sort of ask the same thing that you did about the sub being wet under where the pools are at and even you know the crabs are down there and it's too wet is there anything we can do and you just have to wait until the crabs come up anyone else uh Jeannie is asking is it normal for the top layer of the substrate to get dry but the underneath stays at sandcastle Yes, that's really common. That's why we tell you, do the poke test. Just because the top layer looks dry doesn't mean that it's bone dry all the way down to the bottom. One of my tanks has 16 inches of sand in it. Like, it's always nice and damp, but the top layer is almost always dry. So that's not unusual. Like yeah, just yeah. like the beach. <laughs> uh, what kind of trays did you use under your water pools? Um, <laughs> they're the, the clear acrylic ones that you put in your fridge that have like the handles in the front and back, like it's just a little, yeah, so I just put those underneath my pools. Uh-huh, like that, yeah. I think I found them at Big Lots or something. Uh, somebody else asked on chat, Marilee, um, my tank has been set up for five months, my humidity falls low, I just realized the substrate is drying out, but I have a molting crab, what do I do? Um, so when you have a crab molting, you have no idea where they're under. Just because they dug down here doesn't mean they're molting there. They're like, they're all over the ground underneath there. So you can't just be dumping water in there. You're just going to have to mist the top layer pretty good and then kind of just give it a chance to soak down in there. You cannot create pools or running water because you don't want to run a whole bunch of water down into um, a crab's cave, potentially collapse the cave or just flood them with water while their body is soft and vulnerable. Do you want me to read the one from Randy? Since yeah, go ahead. Question, I know I shouldn't have my pools in the substrate, but my pools are in the substrate. <laughs> and I think the sand around is too wet, but I have two crabs under. 
One crab I can see, the other I haven't seen in about six months. How can you tell if the sub is flooded on the bottom? And at what point would you consider it an emergency to dig up the crabs? That's a hard one. Because if you go poking into the substrate and your crab is down there molting, you're going to harm the crab. So, yeah, that, that's a, another hard question where I think that um, at some point you have to make your own determination. If, if you feel like six months is long enough and that, that crab is gone and your other crabs are in danger and you have to dig them up to check, then that, that's a decision that you have to make, but you should not dig up your crabs lightly. <laughs> that's why I hammer on this over and over again, um, because you might think the crab is dead, but if it's molting, you may just kill it in the process of trying to check on it. So you need to be really, really, have a really legitimate reason that you think there's a flood going on, like it smells or you can see something on the glass. Um, you know, there's an odor, like a moldy fishy or uh, like sulfur odor coming from the tank. Those would be alarming indicators that things have probably gone bad and you do need to get your crabs out. Let her bring you the microphone. We want credit. <laughs> I want people to be able to hear you. Um, I had to step out for a second, so if you covered this, I apologize. Um, fungus. Um, is it still standard if we see um, a mushroom? It's automatic sub-redo. Uh, and if so, why is that? Because, I mean, can we just pluck the mushroom? What is the science behind, I mean, we all know crabs love to eat mushrooms. Is it a certain type of mushroom that kills the crab? You know what I mean? Can you explain yeah. that to me? Um, I think that if it's mushrooms, you should just pull them out. If it's uh, slime mold, that might be like, because I learned a lot about slime mold. It's an animal. It's And like, will move towards a food source. Interesting. So um, if you have a slime mold in your substrate, that would be more concerning to me because it, it will seek out a food source which could be a molting crab. A mushroom can't hunt down your crabs. And it's not gonna have the um, large network of roots the way a plant would. You know, they kind of grow in one spot and there's not a bunch of deep. There might, there's fungus literally everywhere. There's no getting rid of fungus. It's literally everywhere on everything. But if you can just pull it out and it's not like, they're not constantly, like you don't have a whole crop of mushrooms in there. If you have a whole crop of mushrooms, there's probably time to get some new substrate. But one or two here or there, I don't think is a big deal. I think you can pull it out and just monitor the situation. I think I would add to the mycelium, you can tell it mm -hmm. has like long tendrils. Yeah, it's usually and up against the glass yeah. and you can see how far it's spreading and you know what it's really doing. So one of those can be a slime mold. It depends on, on what it is. And some of the stuff is um, UV light reactive, and you can take a UV flashlight and shine on it and kill it if it's up against the glass because it's UV light reactive. It depends on what it is again. Yeah. Um, can you use, you said, and um, getting the So the question is, can you use beach sand instead, like right from the beach? You can, but beach sand is filthy. Think about all the stuff that washes up on our beaches. Chemical runoff, oil spills, just pollutants, um, needles, debris, you know, like, so you're gonna have to wash it and wash it and wash it and bake it and bake it and bake it. The, the children's play sand is ready and sterilized, so that's why our beaches are not clean. And in a lot of places, it's illegal to go and collect the actual natural beach sand, too. So you have to observe local laws. <laughs> I see Shauna's in chat. And Christine says her crabs love eating algae. Baby Lila's love the algae. <laughs> Uh, Jean is asking, when the food you gave your crabs has seeds in it and your crabs plant them and they grow, do you leave the plant or, re or remove it from the, do you remove the plant or leave it? Um, so like chia seed and stuff like that will sometimes really easily sprout. If it's small little sprouts, you can leave it for a little while. They'll probably mow it down and pull it all up anyway and it probably won't survive. I wouldn't let an actual like 
house plant take root in your tank and start establishing itself because the, the roots are a threat. But uh, small sprouts that are just on the surface wouldn't be deep enough to harm anything. Is that it? How many of you guessed the right jar? Very good, very good. Okay, well, thank you guys. I hope you're having a great crab con. <laughs>